Let me try and explain the uh, the deferred processing for the advanced array plugin that I made. Seems like a lot of people don't uh, understand how it works, which you know is understandable because it's, it's kind of odd. It's definitely not something you generally come across in a modifier. So right here we can see how the the typical stack works, right? You start with your base object and then it goes to the next modifier in the stack which does its work and then it steps up and each modifier does its work in sequential order. Well, when you defer your processing on, on an advanced array, we'll, we'll say these ones are the star, the ones deferring, it'll pass up the object from the base object into the array and if it's deferring it'll just pass it up to the next and to the next until one of the items, one of the modifiers is actually processing. And what this top one will do that's not deferring, it'll go back and it'll grab the settings from each of the modifiers below it in the stack and it'll process their settings along with its settings. Now it doesn't really make a change if you're just doing typical you know like linear arrays but I'll show you in a minute kind of some things that you can do or, or can't do if you don't use it you know one thing to know about uh, the deferring is they need to be all you know in in the same order you know you can't have any other modifiers between a, a deferring array and and the array that's doing the processing so for example here we show kind of this array is deferring and this one maybe changing the color and then it pushes it up to this one that's also deferring well this one's going to look back in the stack it's going to find this one and then it's going to look back to this one it's going to say oh it's not an advanced array and it's not going to look any farther and so it's only going to process the settings for this guy and for this guy and so you won't get the same results Now there are some performance uh, issues with with doing the deferred processing. This kind of just shows, you know, when you're doing deferred processing, it's gonna it's gonna calculate for each of the iterations of the main one. It's gonna calculate each of the iterations for the one below it, and each of those ones is gonna defer is going to calculate the iterations for the one below it. And then it's going to go back to the next one and reprocess and reprocess and reprocess. So you can see that that the, the array one here in this list is getting processed eight times rather than the one time it would normally be processed. Or well, eight iterations, which means that it's going to be processed four times, one for each of these ones. And so this one's going to be processed twice. That's just kind of how it works for that sort of thing. And you'll, you'll kind of understand possibly a little bit more here once we look into this. So let's look at this first one here. Let's turn these off here. So we have a teapot, right? And uh, we want to rotate each of these teapots individually, randomly. We can't exactly go down to the random here and just start adding random rotation because then you're just gonna rotate around the same axis and it's just gonna push them around the circle which is probably not what you're gonna want so if you add in a deferring array you don't even have to set any count to it you just have to enable the deferred processing here and that enables you to change the, ro the random rotation for each of the iterations. Turn off deferred processing and you can see that if they all rotate all at the same time rotation. and so we can see that for each one of this top array's iterations it's going to have just the first object in it and it's just going to array that, right? So all you're doing in that instance is you're just rotating the one and it's just duplicating that geometry up. When you defer it though, 
you can see that for each of these it's going to call into the lower iter the lower modifiers settings and get a random rotation so it's going to process that random rotation each time for each of these items in the array and then it's going to do its processing push it out the way that it's doing here another way to look at it is is forgetting things like multi uh, multi frequency uh, oscillations right so there's only a single oscillator in here right so you can only do a single waveform for each of these right and if you are not using deferred processing it does the same thing you can see that it's just going to move everything up and down all at the same time right you can just enable the deferred processing this one has a has a smaller frequency or higher frequency uh, another thing to note though is with this kind of thing is by default the oscillator frequency range is set to extents you know so it's got a single frequency so it's going to go through the waveform a single time throughout the entire array when you're doing uh, deferred processing you need to do it per iteration right so this top one's doing 25 or 200 I guess I've had 200 iterations and so we're going to do a single cycle once every 25 iterations and so you'll be able to have these these higher frequency uh, oscillations mixed in with your lower frequency oscillations right and you can get the same effect on, on like a three-dimensional array too so on that last one I showed that I was doing oops, got the wrong item selected here. on the last one you, you saw that I had a just a single item on the deferring one this one also has 25 on each of them and it just pushes them out on a different dimension here so you get a square one but without using deferred processing you get a waveform like this so when you when you offset it they all move together which you know maybe that's what you want I don't know sometimes that might be what I want but if I was trying to do some animation on there that might not look very cool so I just turn on the deferred processing and then it processes them in different order and this one also is set to iterations and it's set to to go through the cycle once every 25 iterations because that's how many numbers I have as a count there you can change it not to do it that way that's just how I have it set and you can see that it kind of it moves differently obviously you can change this to be like you know like 30 or like 50 and then you get you know non-square kind of changes and you can you can uh, animate the, f the face for both of them you know and then you get kind of some interesting effects let's just do that so I'll just run it through a single cycle on each of these let's see if that works Maybe we want to this guy do like a change one of these to do like two cycles. And that's a little bit different effect. Obviously, if you, you can crank these things up and get a whole bunch of different effects, but hopefully that kind of clears things up so that you kind of understand a little better how these uh, deferred processing works. So, thanks.